Hey everyone, welcome back to Billy Ray Garage. Uh, today's video, we're going to be putting some stuff in the engine bay. Yeah, finally. Mainly this. Going to be getting the intake manifold put in and hook up the fuel rail and fuel line and plug in the injectors, get that stuff all going. Now, before I start the video on that, uh, just do a little housekeeping here and some issues that we ran into. So, these holes, let me get to show you. These holes for the coils, they do not jive with the valve cover holes. So, slight problem there. Now, if you read this fine print on these Holly LS tall valve covers, it says it needs a 72 millimeter coil spacing. So that's like an LS3. Now, I've done a little bit of research into it and it doesn't seem like the LS3 coils will plug in or the wiring harness from the LS3 won't plug into the LS1. I don't know. Losing my mind a little bit trying to deal with that. So I have two options. I could buy LS3 coils and hope for the best, which is expensive. Another option is to put the old valve covers back on and just run with that or get new LS1 valve covers and still use the same bracket and stuff. I don't know what I'm going to do about that yet. Also, another issue that arose that I was playing with before I was making this video because I just wanted to make sure stuff lined up and another problem. So this is your valve cover. It sits lower than the stock one. So these stock style bol bolts for the valley cover are too tall and they make contact with the intake manifold. So I got new bolts that are lower profile, should remedy the issue. And also another thing that came up, the crossover tube for the coolant system. Stock one makes contact and I had to swap it out for this braided one to keep it down because the intake manifold makes contact with it. So swap this out real quick. Hopefully it works. And one final issue that we ran into was on the brakes. I had the car up in the air when I was bleeding the clutch. I was like, you know what, let me, let me bleed the brakes again. So when I had the car up in the air when I was bleeding the clutch system out, I was like, eh, let me bleed the brakes one more time. Well, the rear brakes have zero fluid going to them. It's, I used that little vacuum pump thing and it sucked the fluid out and air came behind it. So, slight issue there. I have, a, I have an OBD2 scanner that can bleed the ABS module, so I'm hoping it's that. But we're gonna try and get as much done as we can engine-wise. Uh, I'll explain to you what I did already. I know it's hard to see down there, but got white line engine mounts. So those things are ready to go. Headers are wrapped and put on. Plugged in a bunch of the wiring harness and got a lot of that set up already. Because when you put this intake manifold on, you need everything pretty much in place. And before you even bolt down the intake manifold. You want to kind of have everything in place and the things that plug into the intake manifold just get plugged in before you even bolt it down. So do that ahead of time. So with all that BS being said, let's start putting this shit in. All right guys, about to do the valley cover bolts. Uh, just to show you the difference between these two. Boop. This big guy was making contact with the bottom of the intake manifold. And hopefully this is our solution. So, I mean, there's good, it's at least half as tall as the tall one. Hopefully this gives us enough room. I'm going to go torque these down. These are, I got these off Amazon because they're stainless. And these take a five millimeter Allen and you're going to torque it down to 18 foot pounds. So let's knock that out real quick. All right, guys. Now when I torque this thing, I do it like anything else that is a large service area. Start in the middle, work your way around. Now, in the past when I've done these, I've had to go back around because I guess the pressure gets put down and it kind of loosens some of these, so I do a second pass around. So just keep that in mind. All right, do one more little pass to make sure nothing got squished down. Yep, that one did. 
All right, guys, now before we go to put on our intake manifold, uh, if you went as far as I did with taking the engine out and all that stuff, uh, plug all this stuff back in and get it ready. The knock sensor here ready to go. This is gonna eventually bolt onto the intake manifold. Uh, you got your brake booster right here. You gotta put that on before you put the intake manifold in place because it's gonna be far back. And our map sensor, that's gonna find a home. And also this little vacuum line. Plug them in, like sit the manifold like here. Try and plug this stuff in, get it in place before you actually bolt it down because this intake manifold sits pretty high. You cannot get back here to get these. So do it now so you don't have to cry later. All right, guys, got the intake manifold in place and I plugged a bunch of stuff in. Got our map sensor right there. That's in, brake boosters hooked up. And I don't know where this little bracket came from, but I'm gonna use it. It's uh, that is for the knock sensor. It's got a little clip, I'm gonna use it. And it seems to fit perfectly, so I'm gonna put it in here. Now make sure, first of all, clean your cylinder heads off before you put this on. And the directions say do not slide this, whatever you do, because it will mess up the gaskets. Oh, and our little, you can't see it, but it's on the other side. But there's a little vacuum line here. That's gotta get plugged in. So with all that being said, I am going to take all these little bolts out and I'm going to lock tight them. That's what the directions say to do. So that's what I'm gonna do. So stand by while I lock tight all these up and get them snugged down and then we will begin the torquing sequence. All right guys, got these all locked tighted up. Uh, I just ran them down till the head of the nut just touched the washer. Now we're gonna torque it down. So there's a torque sequence to this. So that's number one, that's number two, that's number three, that's number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, and number 10. And your first pass is gonna be 45 inch pounds and your second pass is gonna be 89 inch pounds. Now, as for me, I do not have a torque wrench that goes to those levels, like that's really tiny shit. I do not have it. So what I wanna do is, since these are all run down up to the washer, I'm gonna do a quarter turn on each of them. And then I'm gonna go around and do another quarter, maybe a little more than a quarter turn on all of them. And I'm gonna play that by ear. So wish me luck there so we'll do quarter turn till it just snugs up all right quarter turn from there quarter turn quarter turn so quarter turn from there quarter turn quarter turn quarter turn quarter turn quarter turn So about there, quarter turn. All right, I went through all 10 about a quarter turn. So now I'm gonna do about a three, like a one third of a turn to a half a turn on each one. And I'm probably gonna call it quits after that. Cause I don't wanna go too tight cause this manifold will break. It is plastic. It says if you over, uh, over tighten it, then you could crack the plastic. So I'm not gonna go super crazy but I'm gonna do it by feel. If something doesn't feel right at a half turn, I'm not gonna go push it. So let me just snug it up the rest of the way with that half turn and hopefully we'll be good. All right guys, got a half turn on all of them. Now I'm just gonna go around and see if they get loose because sometimes they push down and it loosens them up, some of them. So like if you tighten this one down, it may loosen the neighboring ones. So just go around, double check, make sure that none of them are loose and snug them down. Okay guys, now we're gonna just button some things up. Uh, just basically do the best you can with trying to squirrel this away somewhere. Plug your fuel injectors in, boop. And don't forget your little clips because these things will come off and you'll be like, why is my car running? And then you'll feel like a dummy when it doesn't. This side's a lot more forgiving than the other side. The other side's pretty tight, but just gonna have to make do. Okay, that's in, that's good. All right, guys, got these all buttoned up. I uh, just gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with this for the coils. Kind of leading towards cleaning up the old ones and just putting the old ones on for now. 
but we'll see. Come over here, plug some of this in. Get this guy underneath. Get this is plugged in. Okay, that's plugged in. Good. And we'll get you snapped in. There we go. And let's see what we got here. So you go up in there. Snap. You go in here. Snap. Water temperature sensor. You go there. And then these guys are like mass airflow sensor. Headlights are plugged in. Uh, this one goes to the air conditioning. So you can go in. Right here. Snap. All right, so we just have uh, air sensors for our intake, but that's going to come later. All right, guys, I got the uh, battery hooked up, so now is a good time to bleed the fuel system. We got the fuel rail all hooked up, so crossing fingers, there's no fuel leaks at least. Uh, I'm not going to crank it over. I'm just going to put it at the accessory position and just hit the little bleeder here, and we should get fuel coming out so that when we go to start it eventually, it's got fuel in it. So we should have fuel come out. Let's see. Got some air. Got some air come out. That was good. All right, part two. Let's see what we got. Oh, there we go. Fuel came out. That's good, I guess. All right, we got fuel. Cool. Sorry I douched you there with fuel. All right, guys. Next day, and it is... It's hot as Satan's asshole here, so 95 degrees, awesome. Working on a black car, out, hot. Uh, just give you some quick updates. RIP to the red valve covers. So I determined getting LS3 coils and spending the extra money on all that, that would just be annoying, or spending a couple hundred bucks on new valve covers. I just cleaned up the old ones and put them on for now. I will swap them out at some point. Don't know when, but I'll show you the progress. So I got the coils all in, valve covers are on, plugs are in, plug cables are in. So things are looking good, but also another speed bump that I hit, the little power steering bracket. As you can tell, it hits there. So I'll show you what I got to hopefully remedy that. So I got these here longer bolts with sleeves. So I'm hoping to put the sleeve on the the head and give me enough room to be able to put the tank on and be able to put that bracket on. So let me knock that out real quick and I'll get back to you. Hey right, guys, that's what we look like. Let's see if I can block the sun a little bit. And so this wires run away. So you can see right here, got a sleeve. I put a couple washers behind the sleeve was a little too small and right there you can see the other sleeve it just moves this bracket over this way now hopefully it doesn't get in the way of the intake and it's just a bracket for the tank it's not going to affect anything the power steering pump's still going to attach right here which i'm going to put on right now okay guys got our steering pump put on uh that line in the back it was a 17 millimeter oh the sun is douching me so that line right there that was a 17 millimeter the two that bolt up to the cylinder head our 15 millimeter, torque them down to 37 foot pounds. Put our sparkly new Mishimoto power steering tank up. And I think there's only one thing left to do. And that is fire it up. So I talked to the neighbors and they have no problem with me firing this thing up open header. So see if I have enough juice in the battery. If not, hmm, sad panda. So let's see if it starts. All right, guys, this is my ghetto ass setup just to start it. Got no belts on. Just gonna let it rip and hope for the best. And by the way, I torqued the harmonic balancer down. Uh, I didn't get to the 240 foot pounds, but I got a lot of foot pounds. And then I torqued, took it out, took out the old bolt, put the new bolt in, torqued it to 37, got about 140 degrees of turn. Not scientifically accurate, but close enough. So let's see if this thing starts. God, I hope it does. That would suck if like some little thing went wrong. But let me hook the battery up and we'll crank the key. 
let it run for like a couple seconds if it does run and shut her down all right guys update uh car will not start shocker so when i put the key in the ignition and i put my foot on the clutch to activate the ignition switch on the clutch so that you could actually start the car i just got a click and the car loses power there is a short or a ground somewhere in there that's causing the issue. It could be the positive side of the battery. I don't know. So in the next video, I'm going to be taking apart the whole harness that comes off the battery. So it comes off the battery, goes to ground, goes to the alternator, goes to the starter, goes up to the, the fuse box that's inside the engine bay. Because while the engine was out, the AC compressor was sitting right on that. So it could have just weighed over time, could have broken something. It is 20 year old wiring and it's been heated up, cooled down, everything in between multiple times over the years. That's probably the easiest wiring to figure out. I haven't done any tests on it yet, but I'm gonna do some amp probing and see what I find. But it seems like that is the source of the problem. Now, also another thing is I had the girlfriend go in the car, step on the clutch, turn the key, and I watched it. And the negative terminal sparked a little bit. And same thing, car lost all power. Now, in the making of this video, when the first time I went to do it and it did what it did, I went around, checked all the fuses, the relays, everything seems good. Uh, I pulled the starter relay and got a little wire and just made a little horseshoe out of it and put it inside the fuse or where the relay would go and same thing just sparked done power off now you disconnect the battery put it back on power comes back to the car stereo works windows work locks work car alarm works headlights work everything works except when you go to so that's kind of telling me that uh and also the fuel pump obviously works as you saw in this earlier in this video so it's getting power i think it only has like three grounds on the whole engine there's one on each cylinder head and then there's one on the AC bracket. So I gotta dig around, uh, but I'm hoping it's that whole battery setup. So if I do take all that stuff out and rebuild it, which I'm probably going to, you know, I'll show you guys how to do it, how to take everything out, where everything's located. Being that I will rebuild it, uh, I'm gonna put the grounds in an easier spot to get because it's on the bottom bolt of the AC compressor. <laughs> and it's a whore to get to so i'd probably make it longer to come up to the top bolt so if you do have to maintain it you could see it hopefully it's just in that part of the harness if not then i have another issue and i gotta dig around and find the source in the rest of the wiring harness i tried being careful with the harness but who knows you move it a little bit insulation's dried out things crack some of the ground wires are really tiny we'll resolve that so in the next video probably what it's gonna be about. I'll work on that during the week and hopefully resolve this problem. So thanks for watching. I think I'm almost at 90 subscribers. That's friggin' sweet. You guys are killing it. Anyway, like, subscribe, you know the deal. And I'll see you guys in the next one.